how to make a Jato tower for that epic game that you probably still play. Do you play it? I don't know. Well, actually, if you're watching this, you probably do play it. I don't know why you wouldn't, but... Um, I don't know why anybody that doesn't play that would be watching this video, but if you are watching it and you don't play it, uh, hi. But, um, yeah, so... Uh, so, first things first, uh, you're going to want to spawn in this model. Uh, there will be a link to the model in the description. Um, so... Yeah, it's created by Jukeries. Don't get a fake one. Um, there are other kits, like there's a Kronku kit made by Kronku, the guy who made Tower of Our Enchanting Oscar and Opinions. There's one by Gamatar, who's a moderator in JTO. And there's some other ones, there's like some big ones. But um, if you're not a verified builder for JTO, you can only use uh, this one or Gamatar's one. Uh, yeah, so the first thing uh, I like to do, this is optional by the way, but turn global shadows to false it turns off all the shadows i personally i personally like it off because you won't have to add lights and it just looks better in my opinion just more uh, clean i guess but um yeah so um the first thing you need to do and this is required by the way if you want the clients to actually work um but uh you're going to have to go to uh Oh yeah, I also like to ungroup the frame. Uh, this is optional. I personally like it ungrouped because it makes coloring the floors easier and let and you don't have to like go into the model and then try to find like the thing that you want to color. It's also better for making output sections. So uh, yeah, I like it ungrouped for that reason. Um, but yeah, so there's it says scripts. Read the readme. You open this and then you go to uh, readme, please. There's another readme, but make sure to do the one with please, because this is the one that has these directions in here. But yeah, so it says, damage event script goes in collision groups. Wait, oh, sorry. Uh, damage event script and collision groups goes in uh, server script service. So move uh, the damage event script in there. This is the script. The other one is uh, something else. I think it's like a remote event. But um, put this into server script service and then uh, collision groups server script service and then uh, touch script starter character scripts so yeah put this in the uh, Starter. Oh yeah, so starter character scripts is in there, so you want to go to starter character scripts. Make sure to not get it confused with starter player scripts. Those are two different things and they function differently, so make sure to not get it messed up. And then go local part script, put that in starter player scripts, which is, like I just said, it's different. And then damage event remote event, which is a remote event, goes in replicated storage. Oh crap. No, don't put it in that. I'm just being stupid. Um, but yeah, put this in the replicated storage, which is right there. And then put, uh, effect GUI into starter GUI. Which, oh yeah, it's right there. Um, and now that you have all those scripts, it should function. Also, make sure your game is in R6. I'll show you how to do that. Um, so basically, uh, uh, make sure to save it, by the way. Um, you can do Alt-P if you're not on an Apple. If you're on an Apple, uh, it's, uh, let me see. Uh, I'll, I'll get to, I don't really, okay. So um, make sure to save your game. You can also do uh, publish the Roblox, but uh, just save it as whatever you want. Um, That's probably going to get tagged. Um, but if you want to turn into R6, go to here. There's a chance that if you do this, it will uh, <laughs> it will spawn in a weird version <laughs> of your player. Or there's also a chance that <laughs> it will uh, cause it so you can't move your camera and you have to uh, lose all your progress. But uh, if it's saved, then that works. It says, uh, warning. Would you like to proceed changing the game's avatar type? The setting will shut down any running games. 
So if somebody else is playing this, which has to be public, um, and then you change your, uh, if you change it to like R6 or something, it's going to shut down that server and the guy's gonna get kicked. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but another thing I like to do is, um, we can go to, uh, music, uh, I like to move this music into server storage because it makes it so it doesn't get in the way of the building. It's just easier, in my opinion. And then you can still change it. So if you want to change music, uh, basically what you'll do is you'll go to floor one, which is this music. Then you go to music, and then uh, you go to sound, and you go to properties. Oh yeah, make sure to have exploring properties open, by the way. And then you go to sound ID, and you can uh, you can. Uh, choose a sound ID. It already has preset sounds into it, but you can also do all these other settings. If you want to find the sound ID, uh, what you do is go to create. You can also create your own music, by the way, but uh, you go to create and then uh, you go to library and then you go to audio and you can choose something. You can also create your own if you want, but uh, yeah, that's how you do that. <sighs> okay, so what I like to do is I like to change the color of it. Um, don't okay, so yeah, you can change the color in here. Don't make it something like super bright like this. I mean, you can if you want, but if you make it something super bright like this, it's just ugly and it burns your eyes. Um, what I what I recommend doing is like making it something like like this where it's not like super bright and it doesn't hurt your eyes like a color like like this like, like honestly towers that have super bright colors are just really ugly in my opinion but um if you make it a color like this that's fine um oh yeah and this is where your character spawns what i like to do for this is i like to uh make it uh invisible and go to ken clyde false uh uh, turn to Ken Clyde false, then double click on that and remove the decal. So basically, players spawn there, but they don't even notice it and they can't like interfere with it. So, um, yeah, also, if you have multiple spawns, it, it just uh, spawns you at a random one. Um, let me just the gameplay in this is gonna be bad. This is not really, this is just kind of me showing how to do it, it's not really. You know, me trying to make good gameplay. Um, for this, I like to. Uh, you can you can choose the cobra floor. Oh yeah, if you choose a color that is not one of these, if you want to, if you want to change something else to be that color, um, what you're going to do is you're going to go right here. You're going to take this. You're going to copy and paste. Command C if you're on Mac, like me. Control C if you're on, oh, a non, Apple, and then. Command V if you're on Mac and Control V if you're not on Mac. Paste it, and then for the um, do the same thing for the particle color. However, uh, it's not been working for me. So when I try to change the color of the particles to be red, it's not working. So to troubleshoot that, I just delete the particles. And the particles are kind of ugly and unnecessary, honestly. People will know that you probably don't want to touch it, even if they're. Uh, are not particles. Also for your increment, I recommend setting it to 1, which is basically how far you move it. <clears throat> so if you set it to 0, there can be misalignments, and it, it makes it smoother, but just to be safe from misalignments. And then you can set it to like 0 0.5 if you want to make smaller parts, after that which is 0 0.25, after that which is 0 0.125. Um, but yeah, that's basically how I do that. Um, and for rotation, and for a rotation increment, uh, I like it to be at 2.5, I think that's a good amount. Uh, I also like it at 5. And then, sometimes if I, uh, sometimes I just set to 90. Just if I want to rotate it like that without having to accidentally like misalign it. And sometimes I'll set to 45, which means that you can rotate it like this. So 45 degrees. 
Um, but yeah, I like it. I like to have it at 90 when I'm. Oh crap. I'll, I'll just have it at 2.5 actually. But, um. Yeah, so, uh. You can set the ground to kill break if you want. Um. I'll. Okay, so for spinners, uh. We have a. Spinner to say literally spin. Yep. Also, basically, uh. You see this part in the middle? Uh. Don't mess with this part because I can. Well, I mean, don't mess with it unless you kind of know what you're doing. If you don't, that can, like, kind of cause problems and it can break it and then cause the spinner to fling. Um, because basically, the invisible part in the middle, oh crap. Oh yeah, so if you want to add no clip, basically what you do is, uh, so you search up no clip because no clip, no clip comes in the kit. It goes in the testing point starter pack if you want to use. Take this no clip. Then go put it into starter pack. Um, starter pack. So yeah, and then if you hit play with that in the starter pack, um, uh, you get no clip. So <laughs> that's cool. Um, yeah, and then the spinner spins. Uh, if you ever want to make welded spinners, which is basically a spinner where uh, there's multiple parts in the spinner and they're not like all connected to each other, if you th if that makes any sense and you're capable of understanding it, because I probably didn't explain it very well, but um, if you want to do that, uh, actually first I'll show what happens if you like move the part in the middle, because basically the part in the middle shows where the spinner is going to spin. So if you move this over here. And then it, you hit run. The spinner is going to see it, it moved itself all the way over there because it thinks it's supposed to spin right there. Um, and also, some clients do not work if you hit run. So, uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, and if you want to weld spinners, it's kind of complex. It took me a while to find this out. I had to just experiment a lot until I finally found out how to do it because nobody would teach me but they didn't have to because why would they but um you can do this oh, wait actually no sorry that's wrong i don't know why i'm doing it like that uh so basically what you do is go into here i set the size to three 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 so you can know the difference between the part in the middle and this part i set it to actually i do that part after I'll, I'll set my increment to maybe, uh, I don't know, 20 or something. I'll move that. That's kind of far. I'll set it to 15. Yeah, sure. Um, and then, uh, basically what I do is, uh, I, I go to, uh, this. I go to weld. And then I weld that to that. And make sure there's nothing anchored welded to this. And then... This is pretty confusing, so expect it to break. It often breaks, like, 40% of the time I do this, but... Um, if you do that, and hit run, it should work, if I did this correctly. Yeah, see? It, it, it does that. And then you can make the part in the middle, uh, uh, invisible if you want. And make it so players can't collide with it. Because that could interfere with the hobby. Um... Oh yeah, and if you want to change the speed of a spinner, uh, let me show you how to do that. If you want to do that, uh, go to uh, cylindrical constraint, go to uh, angular velocity. You can change your direction, so currently it's negative 1.5, but if you change it to 1.5, uh, it goes the other direction. But you can change the speed, so currently the speed is 1.5. If you change the speed to like uh, 500. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, watch this. It, yeah, it just glitches out. This is basically like the, the spinner of Troll Lobo in like the uh the event realm, if you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, and if your player collides that it basically just gets flung and gets like zoomed all the way over here because it goes so fast. But yeah, uh Probably don't set it to like that high. 
anyways, um, yeah, so if you want this button, if you want one of, like, these button platforms, so basically, when you activate the button, Um, so basically, if you don't understand buttons very well, basically, uh, I'm gonna show you how to use buttons. So basically, you get this button. Actually, no, I'll, I'll, okay, so, sorry about that, but. So if you go right here, you'll see that these change. So basically, let me just show you how you can use these in, in, in Obby. Oh yeah, actually no, first, um, I need to show that, um, so let's say you want to, um, so basically, let's say this is, uh, neon green, uh, yeah, it's a, that's a really ugly color, sorry for using a color like that, but I'm just using it as an example. If you, uh, take these right here. Anyways, oh yeah, also, if you go to Kilbrick, um, currently right here, there is an int value or something. Oh, uh, sorry, um, currently right here, there is a value, it says kills, so if you change it to insta-kills, it insta-kills you. If you change it to poisons, it should poison you, and currently it kills you, so basically it just does damage. If you don't know what a poison brick is, basically, uh, takes like some damage so if you touch it once and then jump off you'll keep taking damage for like i don't know four seconds or something and then you'll stop taking damage even if you got off the kill brick poison bricks are pretty stupid but i'm not sure if that works it might but i don't know anyways if you go over here <sighs> i have so much to explain in this video um, if you go right here, so, yeah, like I said, these change like this, but if you go right here, uh, it basically changes, so if the button is green, this shade of green, it, like, if it's the exact same shade as that button, those parts, I don't know how to explain this, um, basically the button activates parts that have the exact same color as it. And it doesn't include the part under it, it just includes the actual button. So, that part could be, like, red, and that could be green, and it would still work. Oh yeah, and these are keys, and basically, uh, kind of similar with keys, except... They're keys. Um, anyways... So yeah, let me show you how you could use this in... In obby by the way this is gonna be a really bad example I'm just showing it as an example so don't judge like the terrible gameplay yeah I'm just using it as an example of something you can do okay so I just made a really bad obby as an example just to show how you could use the button um don't think this is what my obbies are actually like I'm just using this as an example I'm not I'm not I'm not as terrible at making obbies as as it may seem by looking at this, but I, I, I just needed, like, I didn't want to spend, like, half an hour making the obby just to make an example. So basically, you start right here, and then you go in these, and then you go in the spinner. Now you have the button. Now you have to, it activated that part right there. Now you have to go over here. And this part was not activated before you got the button, but now that it's activated, you can go over here and then, like, grab around that and then proceed on. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to delete this trash, but. Oh yeah, uh, another thing you should know, so there's two readme's, so there's readme please, and then there's readme, which this has all the information on making a tower, not all of it, but, uh, some information. Um, so it has like, this is for if you want to submit a tower to, uh, um, JTail, and it also has some information on some of the platforms. Alright, the next thing I'm going to show is, um, so I'm going to show to use zip lines and push boxes, or, sorry, not push boxes, uh, 
pushing platforms. I always get them mixed up. I don't know why. But, uh... It's basically... Basically, if you want to, so, okay, let me just show this first. So, if you use this push box, it goes this far, but it can't go any farther. However, if you go into this push box, you go into uh, this part right here. Then you go to, uh, wait, what? Oh, wait, what? Oh, you, you go into this, sorry, uh, you go into this part, then you go to prismatic constraint. Upper limit is how far it goes, so it's currently at 23 by default. Set it to, uh, 150, and it goes over there. Also, um, uh, so, you know how some push boxes go really slow? Well, uh, I think they used to go slow. Um, so basically, if you go to this, then you go to uh, custom physical properties and turn it on. Density is set to 1.5, but it used to be set to like 0 0.7 or something. And that would make it go really slow. But I think they updated it, which is really good because it was really annoying because it used to go really slow. But yeah, I'm pretty glad they... Uh, change that but yeah now if you go in this push box it goes a lot farther also you won't see that green beam in the game that's just in here oh yeah also third party item sales have been disabled your account not been charged uh, that's just a weird error that you get whenever you join studio for some reason it's not like there's a virus it makes it seem kind of sus and like there's a virus but there isn't but uh yeah, it doesn't, it's just kind of annoying. <laughs> I don't really know how to get rid of it, but uh, if you go this way, uh, now this goes farther. And uh, same thing with the zip line for the most part, because zip lines can only go like that far. <laughs> so you might as well just do a big jump, but um, if you go to PC with stands for prismatic constraint, um, then you can go to upper limit and change that to something like that. Also, the zip line will go slow if it's like facing this way. So I recommend going like this to make it. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I recommend changing it like that if you want to make it go faster. This will go through the base plate due to how far. Oh god, that's so long, Dude, this is this goes so okay. Well, that is a long zip line. I'll just delete the base plate, just so that zip line <laughs> is functional. Oh yeah, go ahead and delete the base plate because, as you can see, you can't select the base plate. Well, if you go over here, you can find it in there. That's the way you can select it and customize it. I'm pretty sure you knew about that, but I was just making sure. So now we have a very long zip line. <laughs> probably going to lag out the game yay lag we all love lag uh this is a teleporter so basically if you step in the red part it teleports you to the yellow part you cannot actually see them in game it's just a for studio so if you hit like play you can't actually see them so you can like move this where you want it to teleport you pretty simple um Trying to remember if there's anything else, because they usually forget most of the stuff when it comes to things like this, but yeah, I don't know. I think that's basically it. I mean, if you want to find out how to customize things, just hit that and then you can see like, for example, if you want to uh, customize a turret, you can go to fire, delay damage, distance, and it basically applies to pretty much any client. You can like see like what you can customize for example this would be speed uh so yeah if you want to customize it just mess around and experiment um this is a pretty simple tutorial i don't cover you know most of the extremely advanced stuff so i'll just i'll just cover the morphers 
lastly, and then that can be the video. I hate that pop-up, it's so annoying. But if you, as you can see, if you go like that, this morpher shows up. If you step on this, that morpher shows up. And these morphers showed up, and that one is the time of the morpher. But basically, if you go right here, so each one, each one of these has their own separate button. I have no idea what run repo script does. I have never really messed with that, but um, so let's just use this one as an example. So basically. Morpher duration is how long the morpher lasts for. So basically with the timer. So that one has, the, the top one has three for that because it has the timer for three seconds. This one is morpher speed, so how long it takes her to show up. It's going to like slowly, um, slowly get there. And also when uh, the morpher, the morph is right here, so it fades from there to there. So if this is pink, it's going to fade from red to pink. It's going to fade from that size. And then there's support players, support push boxes. Then, uh, button, yeah, so that's basically the morphers. And then, yeah, for this, it's just, uh, positions A1, A2, platform, flight time, invisible positions, run re- yeah, and get these lighting changes, you can open up the script, and then you can, uh, basically customize it. And these are properties of lighting, so you can basically, for the lightning changes, you can go to lighting. And then you can uh, add anything you want to this that, that is in lighting. Um, yeah, so those are the lighting changes. So if you step on them, the lighting changes, and then this one changes it back to default. These these changes speed. You can customize that. You can change what speed you want to be. This removes it. And if you want to make a no jump section, you can use those. Um, I'm pretty sure I covered most of it, so, um, if you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe if you've not already wanted to, um, I'll see you in another video, bye.